Carrie here with another episode of Farm Your Yard. Thanks for joining us. Today I'm in my home garden and we're going to talk about using a pesticide we use at the Columbia Center for Urban Agriculture called diatomaceous earth. So in today's video we're going to talk about how and when to apply diatomaceous earth, um, how diatomaceous earth works to keep the insects, you know, at bay, and lastly, what insects we use to control with diatomaceous earth. So let's get to it. Firstly, uh, today we're talking about using pesticides, and before you use any pesticides, you want to um, just do some scouting. This particular material that we're talking about today, called diatomaceous earth, is an indiscriminate killer. And so it will kill friend or foe insect wise. So before you utilize diatomaceous earth in your garden, you really want to make sure you identify the pest that you're trying to control and know that diatomaceous earth can work with it. Also, you want to make sure not to use diatomaceous earth on flowering plants because it can hurt uh, pollinators like honeybees and other beetles, which are pollinators as well. Oh, my garden helper is here. Hey, Lava. So before we apply any pesticide, we want to do what's called scouting. And that's where you just like walk around your garden and do some observation to see what, you know, what's eating your plants. Um, and through observation of like the holes or what's chewing your leaves, you can identify what insect is messing up your plants. So let's do some scouting of the garden and see if there's anything here that is being eaten by something that we can control with diatomaceous earth. Okay. Oh, here we go. Here are some tomatillos and they have flea beetle damage on them. Uh, so I can tell that these tomatillos have flea beetle damage by the damage inflicted on the leaves. They have what's called like shotgun holes. If you don't know what a flea beetle is or what kind of damage it does on your plants, uh, watch this other video we made all about flea beetles and how to determine if your plants have flea beetles on them. Now that I know there's flea beetles on this, what do I do with that information? So at the Columbia Center for Urban Agriculture, like at the Columbia's Agriculture Park and the Veterans Urban Farm, if we see something that has uh, flea beetle damage and there's about 10% of each leaf like eaten from the flea beetle, we know it's time to act. We don't do anything if it's just like a hole here or there, but if it's 10% or more of each leaf is destroyed because of the flea beetle, that's when we use diatomaceous earth. So I brought my diatomaceous earth with me on my scouting so uh, we can just get to it. These tomatillos are not yet flowering, so I can apply it safely knowing that I'm not gonna harm any bees. Um, and there's two different ways that I can apply it. So this way, which is um, diatomaceous are suspended in water, is the way that we usually use it at Columbia's Agriculture Park and the Veterans Urban Farm. Oh, here's my other garden helper. Hi. You can suspend about a tablespoon or two per quart of water, um, shake it up, and then spray it on your plants, kind of like this. Well, you gotta turn it on first. Just like this. You wanna spray the top of the plant, the bottom of the leaves, the stem, the whole plant. And you wanna spray it until it drips off your plant. And that's when you know that you've done enough. So I'm gonna do it a little bit more. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, the reason why we apply diatomaceous earth this way at our locations around town is because uh, it uses less diatomaceous earth uh, than the other method that we'll talk about. Uh, so you are more conservative with the material and it's maybe a little bit faster than the other method. Once the, the spray has dried on the plants, there should be like a subtle white sheen on the plant and you'll have to reapply once that sheen kind of like wears off. The other way you can apply diatomaceous earth is through like what we call like the shaker method. Uh, so this is a glass quart jar that has a little bit of like window screen 
uh, cut to fit over the top and it's held in place by the jars like band. Um, and then I filled the jar about halfway up with diatomaceous earth. And then you can sprinkle this over the plants and I'll do it over here. Kind of like so. So you kind of see it just like shakes it over like Parmesan cheese kind of. So this, as you can tell, uses a lot more diatomaceous earth than the first method we used. Uh, but, which is good in some applications, and maybe it's a little bit slower than the first application, but if you don't have a spray bottle, um, or you know that's just not working for you, this is an easy way to go about it. So it's really important to only do this when the plants are not flowering, like I said, because it can hurt bees and other pollinators. Uh, because diatomaceous earth is what we call an indiscriminate killer. Diatomaceous earth is considered a physical control for the insects over the plants because it doesn't work through like the insect ingesting it and then dying like some other pesticides we use do. Uh, it physically kills the pest when it, they come in contact with the, the material. So diatomaceous earth is made from diatoms which are single-celled aquatic organisms. Diatomaceous earth is the fossilized remains of like old diatoms. And diatoms, they have a cell wall. And the cell wall is made of silica, which is also what glass is made out of. So the diatomaceous earth really is just a very abrasive material. And what it does is it slices the exoskeleton of insects, it also dissolves like the oils and fatty acids that like caterpillars and things have around them. So through like dehydrating the insect is how it kills them. At the agriculture park and at the Veterans Urban Farm, we primarily use diatomaceous earth to control flea beetles, but we also use it to control roly polies and ants when, uh, when we're growing things in our greenhouses and the compost we're using has a lot of roly poles and ants in it. Diatomaceous earth is readily available. You can get it at Westlakes or really any garden or hardware store in town. So I'm gonna to continue to keep an eye on these tomatillos. If there's a big rain or if I notice the powder or like the white sheen wearing off, I will reapply. Um, or if the plant continues to put on new growth and the new growth is eaten by the flea beetles, I will also reapply. But over time, as the plant ages and gets more established and taller, the flea beetle damage will become less in the case of these tomatillos. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna continue scouting and treating the plants when I see they have enough damage. Hopefully this video was helpful to you in your own gardening journey. Um, I'm gonna continue scouting. I'll see you later. Bye.